in. I normally have a little music plan for everybody. Welcome in, welcome in. Thank you all for joining. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you all for joining. I do like to give people a little bit of time to come in for this local takeover. I'm super excited to be here with you all tonight for an amazing and fun, educational, and steamy topic of open relationships and marriages. So I definitely hope that you all join in into the conversation, share with me, ask questions, just giving a little bit of a little bit of music as people join in, share and let other folks know that we are on so that we all can enjoy this amazing conversation on Bloco Takeover. So for everyone who does not know and let me know if this music is too loud, just let me know. And if it's not, just give me some hearts and I will keep it going. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome everybody, welcome. Welcome to the Bloco Takeover. My name is Kanya, but everyone, you can just call me Coach K. I am your life, love, and intimacy coach, otherwise known as a certified sexologist. And we are here tonight to discuss an important and wide topic. It is way more common than we would, we would like to think. But because of the way that we kind of sad at people, everybody's not open to it. So welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> so people will join. And of course, I'll always do a recap for anyone who joins a little bit later. But I'm super excited to be here with you all this evening. And yes, I even have a little cocktail for us to... Hmm, sip on while we have this discussion earlier today we saw some delicious food being prepared so i hope everybody got their bellies full you are laid back in the bed on the couch whatever it is that you are most comfortable good evening good evening welcome 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 to everyone and let's Let's dive into this discussion. We won't be here too long because I know it's still what I call a school night. So we're going to get a little bit of schooling and then we're going to go on here to bed. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. So again, my name is Kanya, but you can just simply call me Coach K. I'm a certified clinical sexologist and master sexologist, aka a life, love, and intimacy coach. I am the owner of Love and Intimacy 101 and the proud creator of the Own Your Ish Sis Bootcamp, dedicated to taking women from overwhelm to encourage by focusing on the power of you, as well as helping you to own your sexuality. Because when we own our sexuality, we show up differently. We walk, talk, we smell, we do all kinds of things differently. So let's get into this topic. Because in order to be anywhere close to having an open relationship or marriage, you absolutely have to be in a certain place mentally. So I started this discussion um, on yesterday, excuse me, on Tuesday in my sex and relationship chat that I have on Clubhouse every single Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. as well as on my Facebook page. And it was so, it was so amazing that we wanted to keep it going. We want to make sure we can still talk about it. So let's talk about open relationships and marriages. Number one, you want to make sure that you are ready to have such a thing. There are so many reasons why people decide to have open relationships and uh, open marriages. But you know what? None of my business. It's not for me. But as a sexuality coach, I will guide and encourage anyone who is seeking to get into or is already in and need any type of help with it, that will be my goal to ensure that you are able to um, enjoy it properly. You know what, I didn't even think to put that on there. Yes, my handle on here is Coach K 101 so if you would like to follow me, 
absolutely make sure you do that. I am not sure exactly. There we go. I pinned the comment. There we go. Okay. Let's dive in. So in order to have a successful open relationship, even if you've already gotten into one, you may want to backtrack. There are six, six major key points that you need to consider when you are ready to go into an open relationship or open marriage. I'm going to list all six and then we're going to actually discuss each. Number one, which this will probably be my number one for just about any discussion that I have. Number one, in order to have a successful open relationship or open marriage, you always want to make sure that you have, number one, communication. Boop, boop. Yes, communication. Number two, you want to know the intentions. You want to know why. Major, which is why it's up in that top three, okay? Number three, you want to create a plan to include an exit strategy. Oh, yes, communication is definitely key. Notice I said to include an exit strategy. Number four, both parties need to be on board 100% the entire process. 100% the entire process. We're going to go into that. Number five, you want to decide on what open looks like. It is very important to understand what it looks like for each party. Why? Because we all have different interpretations of what we think things are. Some people call it a trash can. Some people call it a wastebasket. It does just about the same thing, but we all look at it differently. And so number six, if you want to have a successful open marriage or relationship, the number six thing you want to do is always check your emotions and you want to check on the other party. So checking on your emotions as well as checking on the other party is going to be vital and you want to do it throughout the entire process. So now that I've named all six, let's go back and dive a little bit deeper on each one okay so number one when we talk about communication that's a no-brainer right we know what communication is but do we really when we when I talk about communication I'm talking about communication on a level of bigger than just what you hear for me active listening with your ears extremely important but to communicate you need to listen with your eyes your hands, your body, your entire being. Your communication needs to be bigger than what you say and what you hear. Your communication needs to be watching what, how your partner reacts to whatever it is you're talking about. That communication needs to be so transparent and so crystal clear that there should never be any type of assumption on any want, need, or desire that you have within wanting to have or continuing in an open relationship. Communication is if you guys have decided to pick out a female and somebody doesn't, you know, like the way she smells or he smells, whatever, say it, make it clear. If you expected something to happen and the part, your partner did not do it, then you need to communicate clearly because within that open relationship and being, oh, I got to see the whole thing and being poly. Yes, we will go into that. Absolutely. Um, because poly actually falls under the umbrella. So Philly experiences, I will make sure that I talk about that. I even bought my little pen because I run my mouth and I won't forget. So I will make sure that I talk about polyamorous and um, polygamy. Yes. So, um, and actually, we'll probably touch on it in number five with what it looks like. Very good. Um, so your communication needs to be extremely crystal clear the entire time. No, well, I think maybe no hints, crystal clear. Just as clear as y'all can see through this glass, crystal clear, okay? So number two, knowing the intentions or knowing the why. 
it is important for us each party to know why it is that either one of us wants to enter into an open relationship or marriage understanding the why behind it helps to take away from any type of self-doubt any type of mixed emotions and any type of ill will feelings that could come into play a lot faster if we did not know so i think about it like this say you get into this open marriage or relationship and things just did not work out and maybe one of maybe one of you you guys decide to split up right if you never understood why you went into that open relationship from the beginning and now your partner has gone away from you, you may start to internalize, well, what did I do? I was not good enough. You know, I didn't look good enough. I didn't do the right things. You may start to internalize this because you didn't know why you wanted to enter into that open relationship. Like knowing why you entered it, it could be, hey, I just want to do it for fun. I don't, you know, I don't care to be with anyone else. You're doing everything amazing. I just want to have some fun. So if you know that that the open relationship was just there because it was fun, if things didn't work out, you're not left with feeling, oh my gosh, I'm the worst person in the world. I'm horrible. I did something wrong. No. Yeah, it's not for me either, but I definitely, I'm open to anyone who wants to try it and I'm going to give you successful tips on how to do it. So I totally understand. So you absolutely want to know the intentions of being in that open relationship. And honestly, if the intention does not make sense, talk it out. Going back to number one, talk it out until it makes sense to both of you. Throwing in an extra person on a birthday for a threesome is not the same thing okay because that's one of those on a whim things they typically don't really work out because none of these steps would have been followed so this is why we want to know the intentions okay number three was creating a plan so you think about it i'm in an open relationship what i need a plan for we just gonna do stuff to do stuff to do stuff skirt nope that's not how it works <laughs> just like with everything else in your life that can go right when you make a plan this is one of those things what do i mean by making a plan so i'm going to talk about two very familiar stories that are in the world as to why i make sure that this is on my top six of what you want to make sure that you do in order to have a successful open relationship or marriage when you create a plan you know who what when where why how and i always say to include an exit strategy should things go sour this is what we need to do because you want to be prepared for the what if what if someone gets pregnant what the heck do we do hey we already got it planned out we understand what's gonna happen what if we decide to bring somebody into this relationship and they have gone stone cold crazy what do we do it's all in the plan so i was telling you that i was um thought of two specific stories i've been married 15 years and bring someone else in it's a no no for me absolutely I, i'm almost 17 years in i totally understand it's a spruce up a marriage mm, could be some people could use that to um, spruce up marriage absolutely so i think of two distinct stories when i think about um people who didn't have a full-blown plan in place the first one is uh something that is more recent in the news and the media because i don't know if you watch the real housewives of potomac but it came about that ashley and her husband had pretty much an open marriage going on that none of the other ladies really knew about um and i will say that most people do not talk about it because someone's always side on you know people want to keep stuff to themselves, and then it's like oh i'm gonna hold on to my man i'm gonna hold on to myself they don't want you 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 want part of the plan if they've been around you all this time and they try to get you they don't want you okay let's be real so 
Ashley um, was in this open relationship with her husband, and then she became pregnant herself with her husband. Well, it come to find out that her thought process of having an open relationship changed when she became pregnant and had a baby. Well, without having a plan in place, some hurt feelings came up. So we got to see this play out on TV. In her, in, in, in her world, hey, I'm pregnant now and I got this baby. Things should just stop. In Michael's world, we in an open relationship. I'm going to keep doing what I do. Hmm. You good. Take it a baby. I take it a baby. I'm going to go out. No. That's not what she wanted. That's not what the, it was supposed to cut, cut. That also goes back to communication. Did she not say to him, hey, I want this not to happen while I'm pregnant? Maybe not. So they didn't have a plan in place. And so it showed that she was out of town with the baby and he decides to pick somebody up in a bar and later took a picture of him in his underpants and you know she, it wasn't a big deal her thing was i shouldn't find out about this from everyone else you should have told me that this we were still in this you know we were still in this open relationship because in my world i stepped out of it when i had the baby well he didn't step out of it and it's probably because they did not have a plan in place and communication was not there so the other situation that i think about is of course don't 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 will and jada it appears as if a plan was either not in place or was not followed properly because some deeper feelings got involved with the party that was introduced in and it's not it's not for the faint at heart at all and when jada brought herself to the table you can see that he was absolutely, genuinely hurt by this relationship that she created with this third party. But what makes that different than all the other ones? Maybe it was, hey, we don't want to get emotionally involved with our other parties. We're just in this thing for fun. So if they were just supposed to be in it for fun, and someone has now fallen in love with or in lust with or whatever it is, whatever it was that happened, it, it broke some things down within their marriage. And it could be because they have been in an open relationship for so long that they forgot to do maintenance on it. Good evening. So having a plan to include an exit strategy would have been very helpful in both of those situations because in that plan, it could have been very clear that Ashley may have said, in the event that I become pregnant, I want us to take a pause to focus on ourselves and our growing family because if anyone knows, when you add a baby into a family, everything changes quite a bit. What we used to do when we was all willy-nilly, just me and you having fun, being naked all around the house, doing whatever, it changes when we become parents, not always for dad, but definitely for mom. So if a plan was in place, they could have definitely had that thought all the way out. He would have known that while my wife is pregnant and while this baby is born and tiny itty bitty, I need to chill and I need to just hone in and focus on her and the baby and not continue with the open part of our relationship for now. Had a plan been in place and communication would have been awesome with um, Will and Jada, then when, when Jada's feelings or if she would have seen the other party's feelings start to get too deep, it could have been, all right, feelings are getting a little bit too deeply rooted. Maybe I should step back. Let me communicate with my husband and say, what do you want to do? Do I need to wean this back? But we need to have those plans in place to include an exit strategy. So how do we get out of that? You want to have that in place ahead of time. So number four was both parties need to be 100% on board. Oh my gosh. 
You cannot have a successful open relationship or open marriage if somebody is 75% in and the other one is 50% in. Guess what? That is going to crumble. That is like making a cake and leaving out the eggs and the water. You can't do it. <laughs> You're going to come up with something close to it, but it definitely won't be a cake. So you need... 100% from both parties in order to have it to being successful. And I mean throughout the entire process. For me, any client that I speak to, I'm going to tell you that that conversation about even thinking about having a uh, open relationship or marriage needs to be a minimum of six months long. Why do I give it a minimum of six months long? Because that gives you time to truly think, digest, understand, and be on board 100% or not. Because in relationships, when things start getting a little rocky and somebody has this genius idea, oh, let's add another party to it, this already rocky boat. That's just like being in a rowboat and you're doing like this and say, hey, throw me a barrel, you know? So somebody may have this genius idea. We're in this rocky relationship. Let's ask somebody to it. Oh, okay. In that moment, you're so busy thinking about, I want to fix my relationship that you just say, yep, let's do it. Well, you might have said that in a 30-day span. But how do you feel after you sat back and thought about it for at least three months? You may start feeling a little different. Then you may want to bring that conversation back around at month four. And you may have additional questions because maybe you went out and did a little research on it so you can understand it. So absolutely, having a conversation for a minimum of six months before you actually decide to go into an open relationship or marriage is a necessity. It could go longer. I don't want it to go longer than six months. Um, because then you just dragging it out. And at that point you just say no. And the reason why I said a hundred percent throughout the entire process is because say you do y'all select this amazing person to be a part of your relationship and the big day is about to happen. You each went on a date with this person. You got to know this person and you're like, Oh, we're going to bring them home and we're going to do all of that good stuff that we do. And one of y'all is like, uh, I, I really didn't think this through. I don't think I want to do this. And that moment, that person is no longer a hundred percent. We need to go ahead and call that other partner and say, Hey, I know that we had planned for a nice romantic evening and we were all going to, you know, do the do, but I think I'm going to have to reschedule. Let me just have a moment with my partner so we can talk it over and we'll just get back together. Give that person that time to come back to 100% or not. So number five, number five was decide on what open looks like. So earlier, um, Philly Experiences wanted to know the difference between just an open relationship or marriage and um, a poly uh, relationship. Um, relationship a polyamorous uh, relationship basically falls under that umbrella of open marriage or um, relationship so if we think about it when I say number five decide what that looks like is just that are we gonna have just a one-time fling thing and just to see if it tickles our fancy and we'll never do it again then maybe that's what open looks like to one person if you all talk about it and each of you have decided that we want a full-blown bringing in another party to be in a relationship with both of us, then we're now in a polyamorous relationship. Maybe not both. It could be that I bring somebody in that's just with one partner and there's a clear boundary not to be with the other partner. Maybe that's what it looks like. So a polyamorous relationship is um, having a relationship with multiple partners or multiple relationships, excuse me, a relationship with more than one partner 
um, on an ongoing basis, that partner will probably not be engaged with the other party, but they could be. Honestly, what it looks like to everyone is going to be different. It's just like the name says. With Polly, it's, it's multiples. Typically, it's not a revolving door, but it's somebody that's going to be a part of that unit moving forward. Um, it's not, I don't know, I can't think of the name of that show. Um, it was a black couple who they essentially they interviewed the other woman um both the wife and the husband and you know individually had you know went out on a date with her to see if it's somebody that um it would work in their relationship you know the husband and wife had children so they also wanted to make sure that this other person coming in would do well with the children she was actually going to be a part of their full-blown relationship together they shared the bed together. Like a polygamist, they may have each of the wives in different rooms and they did not share the relationship together at all. That's going to be separately. Yes, that show was so good. I, I really did love it. Um, and it just shows a different side of what have, you know, polyamorous life could be it's not just people out here just picking up people off the street and be like ah, i want to be with you today it's truly a meaningful relationship that is built and a family unit that is built so i'm glad i was able to um, explain that. i just want to make sure that i did get that get that down pat so like i said with number five you want to decide what that looks like um does that mean that you have your flings outside of the home and i know about them i don't know y'all decide what it looks like does that mean that we share a partner? I don't know. That's a discussion we'll figure it out. Or is it a don't ask, don't tell situation where you go out, you do what you do, just don't tell me. I will tell you that specific one is less likely to be a long lasting um, thing. And that is probably something that will absolutely break down the relationship because at the end of it all, jumping back to number one, communication is everything. If you have a don't ask, don't tell situation when it comes to having uh, multiple partners or open relationship, then it's no longer open because you're keeping something from. So if both parties are trying to explain that as don't ask, don't tell, I would be cautious of that one. But number five is absolutely you want to decide what that looks like. And then number six, you want to check on your emotions because it is important for you to be 100% whole with yourself. But you also want to check on your partner's emotions as vice versa. You all need to be able to check each other's emotions throughout this entire process. Extremely important. If you see that someone is becoming burned out um, on love, if you see that someone is starting to get down hard on themselves, because even though you all communicated properly and you had this plan, sometimes we still get self-doubt. If our partner is starting to ignore us, that's going to break us down. So we have to stay tuned in and checked in on each other's emotions the entire time. Very important that we do that. So... I have gone over our list of six, and I will do a recap of that list of six. Tonight, um, my name is Coach K, by the way, but um, I'm a certified clinical sexologist, and tonight's discussion on this local takeover, love and intimacy edition, is all about open relationships and marriages. And in order to have a successful open relationship or marriage, I recommend to all of my clients that you have these six things in place. Number one, communication, always gonna be my number one. Number two, know the intentions, understand why you want this open relationship. Number three, you want to create a plan to include an exit strategy. Number four, both parties need to be 100% on board the entire time. Number five, decide and agree on what open looks like to each person. If it looks differently, you're not on the same page, you're not ready. Keep talking. And number six, you want to check your emotions and check on your partner's emotions the entire 
time. I am super excited, number one, that this is even happening because Blocal is the bomb.com, okay? Bringing us all together here, especially being able to have conversation that quite frankly, as black people, we don't have often enough. So I'm always encouraged and excited when I can talk about the positive side of sex and sexuality with as many people that will hear my voice. And I'm super glad and excited that you all were open enough to come here tonight on this local takeover and have that discussion with me. So I appreciate you all. Feel free to follow me so that we can keep that going. And if there's anybody out there that does need any type of coaching in this area or any realm of life, love, and intimacy, please feel free to reach out to me and schedule a complimentary call because I am here to bring that positive side of sex and sexuality into our community because we need it. We need it. Well, I'm so glad that I answered those questions for you. I certainly appreciate you tuning in. And for if there's any ladies out there who's listening to me, I encourage you, check out the Own Your Ish Sis Boot Camp. Um, if you are in a place where your confidence is the bomb.com, but you just feeling a little bit mm, not pretty sure about yourself, go to ownyourishsis.com. Look at that five-week program and tell me what you think because I would love to have you there. So I am, look, I can't get this thing. There we go. I couldn't get that thing down. So thank you all for tuning in tonight. I'm excited to see what the rest of the week may bring. And who knows? Maybe you'll come back and see me again. Good night, everybody. Definitely, definitely reach out. All right, good night.